Uh, Raj was next, and over here. I think the best given the fame, the kind of discourse uh, on petroleum gas prices using the theory of reflexivity, just to uh, help us understand how this theory uh, is with large different insights or maybe counterintuitive uh, insights uh, and uh, really value added it is in terms of if we frame this entire discourse using the theory of reflexivity, because we can bring in things like uh, speculations that can be uh, short in this, the reality of gas prices and perception of short in this, etc. But I'm not actually didn't fully <coughs> hear the question, but, uh, but uh, uh, so let, me, let me try to answer it as I understood it. But go ahead, maybe. It's not a question. I'm saying if you could help us frame the present emerging discourse on gas prices using the theory of reflexivity. Basically, what would you choose to include? What would you choose to exclude? Is it an individual level theory? Who is it useful for policymakers? You, you mean predicting uh, the price of energy Maybe. or price of gas or, or uh, oil? Maybe. Maybe or, predicting or whatever you choose to use it for. I'd like to see how you could use okay. that theory to choose what's important, what's not. What are the aspects which can be Well, yeah, I did that actually. Um, in, in, uh, in my first book, The Alchemy of Finance, where I actually conducted a real-time experiment, uh, you know, making a, a sort of a, a, a diary of, of my decision-making process, um, and then looking at it, you know, from time to time when I was making a, a, a change in the portfolio and, and I recorded it. Uh, and it was very useful. And so that, that is an example. Now, you know, when it comes to the, 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 uh, the price of oil, uh, well, normally I don't actually have a position in oil because I don't know. I don't have a, a, um, a sufficient uh, insight into all the various factors that are at play for me to take uh, for me to take a position. Actually, uh, and, I, actually and actually, I don't really uh, uh, manage the portfolio anymore. But I still sort of advise my children who are doing it, and uh, and we do have a, a, long, a little bit of a, a long position in. In oil, uh, uh, because of the mainly because of the political situation, which I actually in the latest version of the book, the final version, I deal with more extensively than in the version that you had, which is the global uh, the global energy crisis, um, and. Uh, it's, you really, you know, have a political situation um, where there is a you don't have excess supplies of oil. You you um, the excess capacity, which used to be uh, I don't know uh, 12, 12 million barrels a day, is down to less than less than two million barrels a day. So you have no excess capacity. And you have uh, tensions where, where the suppliers uh, want to exploit the shortage. And so you have an incentive to interrupt the supplies, various kinds of incentives. Um, you know, you have uh, pirates in, 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 in the, in the <coughs> Delta, the Niger Delta, that are disrupting production. Uh, you have uh, Chavez who's making noises, and most of all, you've got the Iranian, the the, the Iran uh, crisis, uh, where <coughs> Iran is uh, uh, threatening to to develop nuclear uh, weapons, and we are threatening to to. Uh, 
take some measures against it. And that is creating so, uh, pressures to, to um, uh, build up larger uh, inventories than you normally have. The Chinese feel very uh, insecure because they don't have a strategic reserve. Um, and so you have uh, excess demand, and you have then, on top of that, uh, people who, hedge fund managers who recognize the, 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 the trend and, and jump on board, and they also add to the demand. So, so that is the, it's really, I would say, the, 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 at least a third of the current price is due to the political tensions uh, in, in the world. And those tensions are kind of still building. Therefore, it's, it's, um, it, it makes some sense to, to be long oil. Now, you know, uh, how far should it go? Uh, uh, I'm inclined to reduce the position a little bit. Uh, just to be a little bit on the safe side because there's so much uncertainty. So that's uh, that's the story. Thank you. Uh, I was noticing how uh, you developed the notion of reflexivity uh, by a combination of cognitive and participational. And that suggested to me that it might be possible in the contemporary circumstance to move ahead with the reflexivity theory and apply it to the not only the economic but the political and the social reality. Uh, because later on, uh, you also mentioned that values are the directives of the action. Uh, so that would suggest that the participation is related to the values, and the values, of course, have a long history and tradition, something which is experimented and learned and committed to by a people through the, uh, through the ages. So your suggestion that perhaps we need a new epistemology that will bring together not only the cognitive, which is abstracted from action, but engage the action, and that we need a developed uh, anthropology to understand how will and values and cognition are in fact united in one human person. I think that might take the notion of reflexivity from being more reflection, one hitting the other and bouncing back to the other, into a real unity in depth of those so that our knowledge is shaped by our va values, and that's recognized. And at the same time, our values then can proceed to shape our action. Uh, to be concrete, uh, it seems that in the West, uh, we move very much in terms of rights. Uh, one could say that Islam is most devoted to justice. These are two basic values which uh, shape the way in which we know and interpret and react. Uh, so going more deeply into the epistemology and the anthropology to understand how those meet and then be able to engage with the values of the others would be, I think, a way of carrying your work uh, into a very contemporary mode. So you obviously understand the, the, the idea. And I think your, your suggestion is a very, a very good one, and, and I hope that it will actually happen. Uh, you, know, with, you know, people will start using it more. And, and uh, uh, Now, it's interesting that in, in sociology and anthropology, the idea of reflexivity came up sooner than I brought it up in, in, in uh, uh, field of economics and, and finance. Uh, 